In this video, I will give you the big picture, a brief overview of what you will see me doing in detail in the subsequent video. And I want to do that. I want to do this in order to help you not get lost in all the math that I will be doing. What I have here is the coordinate system. I have the origin X, Y. I have one object and I have object two. And I have drawn a few vectors. <clears throat> R1 is the position vector of object 1. The tail is at the origin, the tip is at object 1. R2 is the position vector of object 2. The tip is at 2, at the object, the tail is at the origin. Now, the vector R that goes from 1 to 2 has the tail at 1 and the tip at object 2. The center of mass, so if the center of mass is somewhere here, then RCOM is the position vector of the center of mass. The tip is at the center of mass and the tail is at the origin. Now, when your system is only two objects, the position vector of the center of mass can be found by doing M1 R1 plus M2 R2 over big M, where big M is the sum of the two masses. And I have also uh, included another equation here for the relative position vector from 1 to 2. This is equal to R2 minus 1. Now, this is what I, I want to talk about. In, in the next video, I will be talking about the Lagrangian. And because I, I want to calculate the Lagrangian, I need to have EK and EP. Now... For EK, this is where I will be doing a lot of work. There are two ways that I can uh, I, I can calculate the kinetic energy. I can either use R1 and R2 to find an expression for EK. And that kinetic energy will be a function of R1 and R2. R, I want to remind you, R1 and R2 are the position vectors of objects 1 and 2. There is another way that I can find the kinetic energy. Instead of using R1 and R2, I can use the position vector of the center of mass and the relative position vector from 1 to 2. If I do that, then I will have a kinetic energy that is a function of the position vector of the center of mass and the relative position vector between 1 and 2. Now, either, either of those two ways, either of those two kinetic energies will be perfectly fine, assuming um, uh, all the math is, is correct. However, <clears throat> typically, when we start a calculation of kinetic energy, we start with this. So in the problems that you have used in introductory physics, including this class until now, we have been using this, the kinetic energy as a function of the speed of one and the speed of two. Now, in this chapter, it is much more useful and it does make our lives easier if we use the kinetic energy that is written as a function of the position vector of the center of mass and the position vector that goes from 1 to 2. This is just easier. <clears throat> what you will see me doing in the next video, and there is a lot of math involved, you're going to see me doing this. I'm going to start with this, and I will do a lot of algebra, really. I'm going to rearrange things. I'm going to take things from one equation, put them to another. So I'm going to do a lot of stuff, but I'm going to start with this, and then at the end I will have this expression. <clears throat> and then, after this, I will show you how this expression allows us to get more understanding, more insight about the particular physics problem that we're studying. But this is the big picture of what you will see me doing in the next